The movie begins with Nick and Angie seated in their car, parked in front of Nick's house. It has been three years since Nick last visited his family, and he has had no contact with them. However, Angie manages to convince him to return home for Christmas. They gather their courage and ring the doorbell, and Nick's mother, Beth, opens the door and is overjoyed to have her son back. She warmly welcomes Angie as well. Unfortunately, the couple's happiness is short-lived when Nick's granddad arrives, who appears far from pleased with his grandson's return. Tension fills the air. Just then, Nick's father, Tony, arrives and immediately begins to express his disappointment over Nick not reaching out to him for three years. The situation escalates, but Beth intervenes and manages to defuse the tension. Soon after, Nick's pregnant sister, Kate, and her husband, Scott, arrive at the house, completing the family gathering. Angie, Beth, and Kate play a word game where Kate tries to belittle Angie because of her ethnicity. Suddenly, the news of recent stabbings in the city blares from the TV. Intrigued, they rush to find out more about the incident. However, their grandfather, without hesitation, directs blame towards immigrants and minorities, asserting that England has become unsafe because of their arrival. Angie, deeply offended, challenges the annoying old man's views. In an unfortunate turn, Kate launches a verbal attack against Angie, fueling the tension in the room. Nick steps in and insults Kate, urging her to shut up. Taking Angie by the hand, Nick swiftly leads her upstairs, away from the conflict. Beth, filled with remorse, approaches Nick to apologize, but he assures her that she's not the problem. Realizing that coming to his racist household was a mistake, Nick plans to leave with Angie the next morning. The couple decides to sleep in separate bedrooms because of the conservative household. Nick and Angie wake up early to slip away while the others are sleeping. They make their way to the front door, only to find a peculiar barrier blocking their path. Nick inspects it closely, even attempting to break it with an axe, but his efforts prove futile. Then, they turn their attention to the windows, only to discover that they too have been barricaded, trapping them inside the house. The others have also arrived at this point, and they try to find a solution. Tony gathers everyone in the living room, where a mysterious message shows up on the television screen. The message sternly instructs them to remain indoors, awaiting further instructions. Tony believes this to be a government emergency broadcast, which means something grave is happening beyond the doors. They frantically attempt to connect to the internet and mobile network, only to find both unresponsive. Tony confides in Scott, discreetly seeking his support as they plan to protect their family. In an attempt to maintain some semblance of normalcy, the family gathers to share a meal. However, when Anji lets out a small cough, Kate and Grandad swiftly jump to the conclusion that she must be infected with an illness, leading to a heated argument. Tony, frustrated by the bickering, silences everyone and assumes control. As he prepares to carve the turkey, a message abruptly appears on the TV screen, alerting them that all the food has been contaminated and is unfit for consumption. Nick, recognizing the danger of blindly following the TV, attempts to intervene, urging Tony to reconsider. Yet, Scott steps in to subdue him. After the argument, they all hurdle in the living room. The TV screen is now showing another instruction. It urges them to exercise caution and use bleach to cleanse themselves of contaminants. Of course, the entire family is forced to follow the command by Tony. Beth overhears the joyful banter between Nick and Angie. Encouraged by their merriment, she tries to spend some time with her husband. However, her dictator husband reminds her that this is no mere game and insists on the gravity of the situation. After a considerable period of isolation, the family reconvenes in the living room. Tony admits to Nick that he may have been too severe in his approach. Nick and Angie also extend their apologies. All seems good until it's definitely not. Suddenly, a bag of syringes drops from the fireplace. Simultaneously, a message is displayed on the television screen, urging the family to administer vaccinations due to the polluted air. Nick immediately voices his concerns, but Tony doesn't care. In his view, compliance is the only course of action. Angie interjects, stating that open syringes can be dangerous as they might be contaminated. Ignoring Angie, Tony impulsively administers a dose to himself. Then he opts to sterilize the syringes by boiling them. The granddad, annoyed by the apparent cowardice of the family members, abruptly grabs a syringe and administers the vaccine. No one thinks you're brave, sir. Slowly, each family member starts to accept the vaccine, except Nick and Anji. They don't deny it for too long and comply anyway. Suddenly, all hell breaks loose when the granddad begins to show a peculiar behavior. Abruptly, he passes away, leaving the family in shock. Fear grips them as they worry if this vaccine could be to blame. 
However, Tony and Kate step forward, assuring everyone that the granddad's demise resulted from an allergic reaction. As the family tries to come to terms with this sudden loss, another message appears, demanding the return of the medical equipment. Tony takes charge and assigns Scott the task of returning the syringes. Scott retrieves the syringes and places them through a mysterious hole that materializes on a wall. In a moment of curiosity, Scott inserts his hand into the hole. To their horror, a message promptly appears on the television, warning them that the access slot has now become contaminated. Scott's luck runs dry as he loses three fingers in an instant. Fortunately, Anji, who's a doctor, skillfully sutures Scott's wounds. Meanwhile, Nick, exhausted by the distressing events, goes to sleep and drifts into a dream, but is quickly woken up by Tony. Descending the stairs, Nick sees the new message on the screen. It declares that someone within them is contaminated, emphasizing the need for immediate isolation. The racists immediately think it's Angie as she has coughed earlier. Nick attempts to defend her, but Angie acknowledges that they have no choice. She's locked with the body of the granddad. Nick stands outside Angie's room, trying to communicate with her. Angie urges him to turn off the TV and see what happens. Nick recalls Tony's strong belief that the government is responsible for the broadcast. Still, Angie encourages him to take the risk. Nick decides to give it a try and heads downstairs, where he encounters Kate on her way to the bathroom. They engage in a brief chat, and Kate even allows Nick to feel her baby's movements. As she departs, Nick seizes the opportunity to switch off the TV. To his surprise, Kate shows up then and there. Her anger flares when she discovers the TV is off. She calls out to her dad, who promptly arrives and switches the TV back on. The screen displays an array of symbols before a red message warns them about the potential risks of interrupting the emergency signal. Kate launches an attack on Nick, making him defend himself. Scott intervenes, escalating the situation further. Chaos ensues as Scott hurls Nick at Kate, resulting in her falling from upstairs and fracturing her leg. Scott remains frozen, seemingly in shock. Suddenly, a message flashes on the TV screen that says, I see you. It jolts Scott back to reality, and he rushes to aid the injured Kate. Nick and Tony hurriedly place her on the kitchen table, the pain causing her to lose consciousness. Nick, concerned for his sister's well-being, attempts to provide assistance. Tony, being an irresponsible father, announces that he must retreat to his room and leaves Nick to tend to his injured sister alone. Nick rushes upstairs and relays Kate's condition to Angie who grimly informs him that the wound has become infected, and without medical treatment, Kate will die. Nick wastes no time and rushes to inform Scott about Kate's condition. Scott, filled with determination, realizes they must escape to save her. He reassures Nick that he can rely on him. The conversation shifts to brighter thoughts as Scott envisions a future with Kate and their unborn child. They excitedly discuss potential names, Louis for a boy or Ruby for a girl. Then, Nick heads to the bathroom to freshen up. Suddenly, his eyes fall upon a toilet pipe. Acting swiftly, he creates a hole in the wall and employs his phone on an improvised stick to catch a glimpse of the outside. Meanwhile, a loud noise startles Scott from his slumber, and he finds a warning flashing on the television screen, indicating an ongoing exfiltration. Tony appears, commanding Scott to accompany him. Fueled by resentment, Scott initially refuses, but Tony skillfully manipulates him, and Scott obviously complies. In the bathroom, Nick witnesses a peculiar sight. It seems a swarm of snake-like wires is attacking his device. Suddenly, Tony and Scott emerge, assaulting Nick and restraining him. Nick tries to make Tony watch the video, but he disregards his claim. He shatters Nick's phone and forces Scott to check the television for any messages. To their surprise, Scott discovers a directive demanding the extraction of information from the sleeper agent. Tony swiftly deciphers the hidden meaning, realizing what must be done. Without hesitation, he turns his sadistic attention to his own son, subjecting him to unimaginable torment. However, his act is interrupted by Beth's screams. Tony and Scott rush downstairs, only to find Kate's lifeless body. Tony, devoid of remorse, callously declares that casualties are an unfortunate reality of war. Beth, having had enough, lashes out and delivers a deserving slap across his face. Gathering herself, she swiftly proceeds to untie Nick, ensuring his safety. Then, overwhelmed by her grief, Beth locks herself in the bathroom. Subsequently, Angie finds a small television in her room, and to her surprise, the screen displays the eerie message, I see you. Curiously, she opens the TV only to discover a black throbbing heart nestled within. Suddenly, a notification appears, alerting her that the security has been breached. 
Mysterious black smoke comes out from the pipes in the walls, and a piercing alarm jolts Nick awake. A message urges all survivors to return to ground level. Determined to save Anji, Nick and Scott spring into action, while Tony stands paralyzed. Scott scours the kitchen and finds the keys, passing them to Nick, who swiftly unlocks Angie's room. Tragically, their efforts come too late for Beth. Taking refuge in the living room, the remaining survivors barricade themselves inside. Angie tells Nick about the cryptic messages displayed on the TV. Just as tension thickens, the television suddenly starts transmitting messages, implying the presence of a divine being. Tony desperately seeks a sign, and astonishingly, the baby within Kate's womb stirs back to life. Lewis and Ruby's names begin to appear on the screen, reinforcing Scott and Tony's belief in the divine being. The next message delivers a chilling ultimatum. They must sacrifice someone to save the baby. The group immediately decides that Anji shall be the sacrificial lamb. However, Anji tries to save her by stating that only she possesses the skills to perform a cesarean section. They force Anji to perform the surgery immediately. Tony, the arrogant oaf, viciously begins to attack Nick instead. Angie refuses to perform the surgery until Scott tries to save Nick. With no other option, he complies but is immediately killed by Tony. Nick retaliates against Tony, engaging in a grueling battle. After an exhausting struggle, Nick manages to overpower Tony with Angie's help. To finally kill him, he drops the television on him. As the TV crashes onto Tony, something peculiar happens. Cables start emerging, not only from the TV but also from the windows. To Nick's horror, the cables possess Tony, transforming him into a grotesque creature. The cable creature speaks through Tony, urging Nick and Angie to worship it. Surprisingly, Nick realizes that the creature doesn't intend to kill them. Instead, it reveals itself as a parasite, dependent on its existence to survive. Nick takes action. He destroys the creature hidden within the TV, causing it to explode. In an instant, the cable creature meets its demise, bringing relief to Nick and Angie. However, their relief is short-lived. To their utter shock, the supposedly defeated creature surges up again. It mercilessly kills Nick and Anji. Then the creature brings a small TV before the dead body of Kate. The cables melt Kate's flesh, reducing her to a mere skeleton. Amidst this horrifying sight, we catch a glimpse of the baby, seemingly unaffected by the chaos. Suddenly, the TV springs to life, displaying two eerie messages, Hello Ruby and Worship Me. The movie ends with a chilling view of the neighborhood. These creatures have invaded every house, leaving no one safe from their sinister clutches.